Welcome to NovelBot. This is the audiobook of Rebirth of A Genius. Creator Destroyer Chapter 151 to 160. Sam is concentrating on his work in the evening. He cleared more than 60 square yards by now, and if he continues on with this, he can clear more than 120 square yards by morning. Right now, there is a 10 meters deep pit which extended for 60 square yards behind the mansion. After working until now, he came to a conclusion, if he improves his mental strength, he can finish the work faster. So, he decided that he would cultivate his mental strength for the next 15 days. As for the hindrances from the instructors and the Thunder Wolf squad, he already sorted his thoughts, and from tomorrow onwards, the people who would be walking on eggshells would not be Sam and his teammates. At this moment Philip, Watt, Kelly and Jack came to him. The things he needed were already manufactured by the artisan tower, and even the materials have been brought. So, now he has to delegate the work for these four. Don't worry about doing business anymore. Just stay in the estate and start manufacturing what I told you to do. Make as many as possible. Philip, Kelly. Since, you both have fire element, try to clear the impact crystal as much as you can in the free time, but don't focus on it too much. Your primary job for now is manufacturing the things I asked. Make sure the D-I-M-E-N-S-I-O-N-S measurements don't change and be as precise as possible. Make as many as possible for the next two weeks, and I will bring them back to the camp with me to assemble them. Since, they shed all the cordiality with us, we don't have to care for their opinions. I will make them regret ever provoking us. After that, he explained their duties and sent them to start immediately. All this while he didn't stop clearing the crystal. By midnight, Sam noticed something, constant mental exhaustion and recovery. He noticed a slight improvement in his mental strength, which is the only good news in the past few days. After some time, Sam has a sudden thought. Since, I don't need all of it in the powder form, will be possible to remove a big chunk of it by disintegrating the bond with the remaining crystal. This question popped up in his head and he immediately took action. And when he knew that it is possible, he was ecstatic. His process is faster now, as for making the chunks into powder for later use, he can do that when he is working with them, until that point, he doesn't have to worry about it. He can even turn it into powder when he is idling at the camp at night. By midnight, Sam already cleared more than 120 yards. After working for two more hours, he stopped everything and went to take rest. If he is mentally frustrated due to overwork, he might act rashly in the camp. He already has a plan and has to deal with it with some rationality. Even though he would let loose and blow off of some steam, he still shouldn't completely go berserk. But Sam is still worried about how to deal with this crystal. The whole estate is around 1,000 acres out of which around 700 acres is full of crystal and for the remaining. One acre is 4840 square yards, and now 700 acres is 338,800 square yards, and now he was only done with 150 square yards. Even though he had found a more efficient way to deal with this, he still has to work a lot. By his estimation in his current state, Sam can clear around 600 yards if he worked in the same pace, and that is not wasting any time at all. He can do so twice a month, and which makes 1200 yards for a month, and in total he can only deal with 9600 yards in 8 months around 2 acres. He cannot let this happen, he has to think of way to deal with this as fast as possible. He needs at least 500 acres of land for his plan to work, and he also needs to assign some work after clearing some land, so that the construction process will work as soon as possible. Sam took rest for another 2 hours, and along with Hawk and Drew who had a peaceful sleep in a long time. They reported without any delay, and the instructor didn't find any fault with them. After the early morning routine is over, Sam went to find someone. From today onwards, he was done with being defensive. That General Spark may love his grandsons as much as he can, and he can spoil them as much as he can, but to do that on expense of Sam and his teammates, the General should think of the consequences. Since, the other party used the loopholes of the competition to make a move on him and oppressed him with the involving the Thunder Wolf squad and even the regiment commanders, he can do the same. Sam cannot vent his anger of the general directly, but he can still do so on the people who got involved. Is it unfair? Hell no, if it is unfair, then oppressing Philip, Hawk and others just because they teamed up with Sam is also unfair. The general's reasoning is that they can only blame themselves for being with Sam. So, Sam is also using the same reasoning. You can only blame yourself for helping the general. Sam went to find a person, and that is the deputy general who refused to say his name. Instructor, may I come in? Sam asked as he stood up outside the tent. Come in. Sam walked inside and looked at the deputy general who was sitting behind a table as he examined Sam. What do you want? I want to talk to you about something. Is it about you being oppressed by the instructors? If it is, I am sorry, I cannot force them to do anything, even after all the things they did to you, it can only be considered being biased, and I cannot force their bias out of their heads. They played within the rules, I cannot take action. Actually, no. I have two requests. 
First one, I am here to request you to give me permission to halt the training for the day, so that I can challenge some people. Deputy General raised an eyebrow as he asked, Why do you need a day off for a challenge? I won't need a day off if I have to challenge a single person, but I have multiple opponents. Deputy General seemed intrigued and said, Granted. What is the other request? I want you to supervise my challenges. You think that you are worthy enough for my supervision. Fights of your level won't need me to look after. His words are rather arrogantly spoken, and one could smell the pride from the voice. But Sam didn't take offense. That type of arrogance is not in burn, rather it was cultivated on the basis of countless accomplishments. Nobody has a right to point a finger at a person like that. How are so sure that they are not worthy? Besides, literally the whole military is against me. I cannot trust anyone except you. Deputy General didn't know how to reply to those words, and said after some contemplation, I will give you half an hour. If your fights seem unworthy after that, I will leave. Sam smiled and said, Sure. You won't be disappointed. Shall we go now? Deputy General nodded and followed Sam out of the tent. In actual fact, he cannot be bothered with some common duels involving a novice. But seeing Sam's confidence and analyzing his situation, if Sam really provoked a soldier from a regiment even if he won, the remaining people will take it out on him by continuously challenging him. And even that regiment commander will take it out on him. Judging from the records his team already lost 100 points, this would actually become even more worse. But seeing Sam's confidence, he was intrigued. He wants to see how this boy will resolve the situation. Soon, they are in front of the 5th regiment camp. The regiment their current instructor is in charge of. As soon as they entered the camp, everyone is looking at the deputy general who is walking beside a boy who is wearing a rookie soldier uniform. They are feeling peculiar. The regiment has 3,000 members, and more than 60% of them are novices. The acolytes wouldn't make the cut in the Dukem army. So, the novices occupy the most part. And among those 1,800 or so novices, 800 of them might be at middle and late stages. Sam's target are those people. He slowly strode towards the arena of the challenges and looked at the camp. This action gathered the attention of many people, and slowly the crowd started growing. When he thought that he had enough audience, Sam shouted in a voice loud enough for the whole camp to listen. I am Sam from the special batch who is undergoing the competition. Today, I am here to challenge the novices from the 5th regiment. From what I know, there are 1800 novices in this regiment, and I am here to challenge all of them. Th. For every fight I lose, I will give 10,000 spirit stones to the winner, and if the other party is a team, I will pay 10,000 for each of them. For every fight I win, I will collect 5,000 from the losers, and if a team loses, I will take 5,000 for each member. The whole camp was stunned. They didn't expect that someone will come to their camp and challenge them like that. If it was a normal challenge, they might want to back out, since they weren't challenged individually. But the bait of wealth is quite tempting. Some of the soldiers recognized Sam. They're the ones who challenged Ruin Hawk. One of them asked, What is your goal here? He knew that Sam was being troubled by their commander, so he wouldn't come here for no reason or just to make some quick cash. I think that the might of Southern Star military is overrated. I want to prove my point by cleaning up all the novice trash here. After all, this military can only use the loopholes to make trouble for me and my friends. So, I am here to prove my point right. The soldiers immediately became angry. How dare you? You think you can walk alive from here after saying those things? You must be having a death wish. I will kill you. The soldiers started shouting at him, but Sam just scanned the crowd and said, Are we talking or are we fighting? Prove me wrong if you have guts. Our deputy general will be the supervisor of the match. I will take as many challenges as you can give. I am not getting out of here until I clean up the trash of 5th regiment. Sam's words only provoked them, even more. You little shit, I will take you on. One of the guys said as he walked onto the stage. Deputy General stood at the supervisor's spot near the stage. Sam and the soldier took the positions. Are you guys ready? Deputy General asked both of them and when both of them nodded, he said. Fight. As soon as his voice faded, the soldier picked up his spear and lunged towards Sam. He is a level 8 novice. His speed is not bad. Below the stage. Come on brother, show them what a soldier is. Teach him a lesson. Yes, how dare he look down on us soldiers and our military. They are encouraging him with loud shouts. Sam didn't care about the jeers and cheers, and he didn't even move even when the spear was just a foot away from him. Just before the spear was about to touch his neck, Sam made his move. He moved in a blur and before anyone could react what is happening, they heard a slam and a crack. Before they knew it, all they saw is Sam holding the neck of the soldier, and the head of the soldier is nailed down on the arena, as if it was a crater falling from the sky. The crowd grew silent. The soldier isn't dead, but he is feeling dizzy and powerless. Sam slowly stood up and clapped the dust away from his hands. The soldier slowly stood up with the support of his spear, he looked at the deputy general and said weakly, I surrender. 
His voice is as weak as it can be. He took out the spirit stones from his spatial ring and threw them into the pile of spirit stones. Even though he lost, he is not a sore loser, he still has dignity of a soldier and paid the wager. He stepped down the stage and tried to walk towards his tent, but after taking two steps, he fainted unconscious and his nose started bleeding. A healer immediately tried to stabilize his condition, after some trails, he said to a man nearby. He needs a level 4 healer to recover completely. The man seemed to be the company commander or the battalion commander, his colleagues are showing him quite the respect. But Sam is having none of it. Are you guys going to come or not? I don't have much time to waste on pieces of trash like you. The crowd was provoked again. But nobody entered the stage boldly. Sam pointed at a person and said, You, come up. I challenge you. This guy immediately became tense. He is one of the few people who knew why Sam is doing this. Their commander is the one who provoked this madman first, and he is one of the close accomplices who beat up this guy's teammates. So, he is really afraid. He even has some thoughts of backing out, and if the deputy general is not here and the supervisor is from their regiment, he could have done so by explaining the situation in secret and kicking Sam out of their camp. But Sam brought the deputy general, and breaking rules in front of him is akin to courting death. He slowly walked up and he decided in his mind. He would initiate the attack and if he couldn't get the upper hand, he would just surrender. Fight. As soon as they heard the command, he was about to move, but this time Sam didn't stay passive. He made the first move. He kicked at his feet and vanished from his spot before mysteriously coming in front of the soldier and threw a punch at the lower jaw. Crack the silent crowd can hear the joint at the jaw breaking. The soldier immediately got ready to surrender, but his lower jaw is not moving, and all he can say is some incomprehensible sounds. Now, he understood why Sam hit his jaw. He is not even giving him a chance to surrender, before he could swallow the regret of provoking this madman, Sam held the neck of this guy under his arm and started hitting him on back. The bones on the back started shattering, and even his spine broke into several pieces. Sam threw the limp body two away before he took away the spatial ring. He took out the 5,000 spear stones and threw the ring back at him. The soldiers got cold feet, nobody even dared to look at Sam, they are all wondering why he is doing this to their regiment, who provoked him exactly. At this moment, one of the soldiers who gave Hawk a beating before went out of the crowd and ran towards Sam's camp. The current instructor is the regiment commander of the 5th regiment. Sam saw this action but didn't stop him, the instructor also needs to see what are the consequences of provoking him. He wants to punish Sam to suck up to some superior, then he has to pay the price with will and strength of his subordinates, today Sam has only one motive. He has to kill the morale of the whole 5th regiment, and he has to kill the morale of the remaining regiments one by one within these 15 days. He will cripple the entire army of its novices. He would see how General would like if Sam played by the rules just like him. Sam looked at the crowd and when everyone was turning their gazes away, he walked towards the end of the stage and threw a handful of spear stones at the crowd. Take this money buy some beautiful female clothes. He took out another handful of stones and threw them before saying, Take this money and buy some cosmetics. You call yourselves men. Bullshit. No wonder even your general has to resort to some despicable means to have his grandsons back. Like superior like subordinates. Pieces of shit. He is clearly provoking them and he is intent on doing so. He would do so with all his might. Sam himself is not so compassionate by nature. And these guys are provoking for the past 15 days finding fault for his every move. Even his teammates outside are having a hard time, if he doesn't teach them a lesson now, they will go overboard. As for these novices, who is going to lose their will, they should blame themselves for having such superior. Sam's words truly infuriated the crowd, and a man immediately came up to the stage. He knew that he cannot win, but he only has one thought, he would at least hit Sam before getting defeated. But before he could make his move, Sam said, Take out the money first. It is hard for me to take it myself. Even though the man was infuriated, he didn't show it on his face. He took out the spear stones and made a small pile on the side of the stage. Then he turned towards Sam, even before Deputy General commenced the fight, he leapt towards Sam head on. His moves are forceful and suicidal. He didn't care about the injuries, all he cared for was to get a single hit on Sam. But his hopes were dashed. Sam threw a wind blade on the man, making a huge gash on his chest. This caught the soldier by surprise. Before he could realize, Sam is already in front of him, and he started slapping the soldier continuously. You want to fight kamikaze with me? Pa 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 pa, you can do so in your dreams. What a trash. You call yourselves soldiers. The enemy must also be extremely weak, since they can't even beat some trash like you. Sam is not even sparing them a shred of dignity. He is making them lose in such a pathetic state. After making his face a pig head and breaking several facial bones, Sam threw him towards the crowd like a trash bag. Next. He shouted loud and clear. Another soldier came to the stage and said, 
Can we just duel without wager? He asked. After all, they are already losing, and they have very little hope unless the company commanders make a move. But losing their money which equals their growth is even more painful. Do you think that my time is that cheap? The all-powerful Southern Star military cannot even take out some money as wager. What a waste of time. I wonder why Duke even let us come here to train. You don't have to be like that. You could just say that you won't agree. Must you put us down like that? The soldier felt his face burning. The young man is making this light of us, and they cannot do anything because of the supervisor present. If the deputy general is not there, one must wonder how they would have dealt with him. The soldier took out the money and threw them into the pile. Just like the previous one, he was beaten to brink of unconsciousness. After throwing this guy out, Sam was about to call another one when an infuriated shout came from a distance. Sam. Without even turning his head, Sam could guess who other party was. It is the regiment commander of the 5th regiment. At first, he was happy that Sam was not there for training, he felt that he could use a legitimate reason to cut some points for the first time, but when a soldier from his regiment came forward and explained the situation, he immediately became angry and agitated. He didn't expect that Sam would retaliate like this. Sam, how dare you put down the soldiers of the Southern Star military and injure him like that? You seem to have forgotten that you are also part of this military now. From this point alone you could be branded as traitor and executed. Sam didn't even bother to reply and only looked at the deputy general. He wants to see the latter's reaction, and since the other party is as calm as ever, he spoke to the regiment commander. It is not if what I say is true. I am here and fought four duels and won all of them without breaking a sweat. Trash is trash, no matter how much moral high ground you take. Seeing this trash itself is indication of your ability. And here you are trying to train me. You should have thanked your lucky stars that I am not a grand realm cultivator. Otherwise, I would have kicked your ass until you call me your grandfather. Sam didn't even hold back at insulting the instructor. The instructor's veins popped on his forehead. He didn't expect that Sam would be this unruly. How dare he, a small novice, come and say these words to him. He almost made a move on Sam right now. Only the presence of the deputy general is stopping him. But the most infuriated people are not instructor rather the soldiers. They are blaming themselves for not being competent enough to not to be insult to their commander. Deputy general, you have seen the impudence. We should punish him by military law. The regiment commander asked with a loud but respective tone. Deputy general just gave him a sweeping look and said. Just like he said, if what he said are just simply accusations, I will take action, but if it is true, then I must think about you and your efficiency in doing a good job. After all, if a single novice can beat all the novices of your regiment, I must also say you are trash. So, if you want to take action, defeat him and prove him wrong. The soldiers couldn't take it anymore after listening to this. Sam's provocations along with the deputy general's statement made them even more indignant. You said you would take team fights, right? A squad captain asked Sam. Sure. Are you okay with the squad? Come on, then. What is having one trash and seven trash? The only difference is the time of cleaning. Sam kept on with his trash talk. Actually, he didn't like this trash talk at all, but he has to do it to achieve their goal. First one, is he would empty the wallets of these guys. He would stand on high pedestal as if saying that even his beating is worth money, which would let them to take out the money, in order to not lose out. Second one, the trash talk will not only rile the people up, but if he won in the same overbearing manner, the people would feel the trash talk is true. Third one, once they really felt like trash, the novices which are more than half of the regiment, will lose belief in themselves and their teammates, and lose their confidence and morale which would in turn affect the morale of the remaining great realm cultivators too. Whether he likes acting like this or not, Sam will continue this trash talking, so that he can achieve his goals. The squad came up and all of them made a small heap of their spear stones near the stage. Before they took the position. Deputy General gestured to start and Sam didn't stay passive anymore. He immediately made his move. Restrain him. The squad captain ordered and a member of the team immediately placed his hands on the floor. A series of vines popped up and one of them hooked Sam's legs. Lock his retreat. An earthen well appeared behind Sam's back while he was trying to get out the vines. But he was in no hurry. He looked at the remaining members who were planning for the big move. A squad captain placed his hands on the floor, and big chunk of rock started materializing from the ground. It is spherical in shape. There are some grooves over the surface. Then the remaining three people who seemed to be fire types, started making hand signs and chanted a spell, and soon they directed the flames towards the spherical rock. The flame entered the grooves, and the rock started changing colors. Meanwhile, Sam is just looking at the scene calmly, he let the vines wrap around him, and let them restrain him as they wished. He is looking at the rock with intrigue. At this moment the soldiers are relieved. Finally, he will be done. Damn it, I was so afraid that he can win a squad. Yeah, and he is not facing any ordinary squad, he is taking on one of our best squads. 
The flaming meteorite is one of their best skills. The soldiers were discussing, when Sam sensed something, the core of the rock was melting, and it is slowly making its way towards the surface. Only thin layer is separating the lava from the surface. If this can be shot at a sufficient momentum it would have been a good attack, but this is only useful in war where their teammates can buy some time, and it is most suitable to attack a group. Just before the team could make the attack, Sam smiled. You think you can stop me? Dream on. He was suddenly engulfed with golden flames, which burned the vines. Shoot. The squad captain shouted. But his hands aren't as fast as his mouth or Sam. Before he could make a move, Sam reappeared above the rock with a crooked grin on his face. He swung his leg as he kicked the top of the rock. The thin layer cracked by the impact and started crumbling. The lava exploded all over the squad members before they could escape. Sam didn't linger on them and went after the wood element mage who restrained him and the earth mage who blocked the rear. With a single kick for each both of them are out of the stage. Sam leisurely walked towards the injured four who are still burning with the lava. The fire elemental mages are a little bit alright compared to the squad captain. He looked at the four of them condescendingly and said. I stood there and you guys cannot lay a single strike on me. I think calling you trash is even me being generous with my words. He kicked them off the stage and shouted. Next squad. Nobody moved. Sam looked at the crowd and spotted the person who called the instructor back. You come up with your squad. The soldier didn't have any say. As soldiers they have a rule to not turn down a challenge, and the person who is challenging has a lower cultivation than his, and he is even challenging his whole squad. It would be a disgrace to try and turn down. The soldier gave a blaming look to the regiment commander, and walked towards the stage with their squads. He added their spear stones to the previous small pile created by the previous squad. This time, the squad is of the seven swordsmen. They're trying to surround him. Their coordination is impeccable, and they are even better than the previous squad in cornering a single enemy. But Sam dealt with them all the same. This time, he didn't pull his punches at all. All his hits only landed on their faces, and every hit made them lose a tooth or crack a facial bone. Sam is toying with them completely. The same scene continued for a while before they admitted defeat. And another squad came, then another squad came. Just like that, before afternoon, Sam dealt with four companies. Trash this is the only thing Sam has to say all of them. In fact, most of these people's combat prowess is decent. But the problem is that they are quite intimidated and disturbed by Sam's actions and words. Sam's words are all over their heads. Deputy General noticed that Sam is achieving his goal. He is observing every step of Sam. A huge pile of spirit stones is used as a bait initially, and then Sam's words are greatest provocation to any army. He entered the heads of all these people without much effort, and now they're delivering their dignity and money at the same time without even thinking straight. At this moment, the regiment commander said. Stop. Sam didn't bother with him and was about to target next squad before the regiment commander said. Didn't you say that military is trash? The military power never lies in individual strength or strength of a squad. It relies on the whole army. You dare to fight against the whole army. Everyone was stunned by the shameless words. The soldiers also didn't expect that their commander would make such claims. Actually, their novices are not that great. Because, the true novice experts are scouted by the city guards for their individual strength. The novices in this military are quite used for combined attacks. But even then, losing to a single novice is already a shameful matter, much less fighting in squads. Now, their commander is even more shameless to ask him to fight against an army. But the regiment commander still continued. You said that the military is trash. If the military didn't fight together then how can you say that it is trash? If you don't prove it, I will punish you with martial law. So, what is your point? Sam asked with some impatience. However, he knew what is going to happen. Fight a battalion and win. Then what you said can be considered true. Sam didn't reply immediately and just looked at the crowd. Seeing this the regiment commander pushed even more. If you don't accept, prepare for punishment. I would deduct every point for disobedience from your team, and you will also be given the harshest punishment possible. He is hanging on to this last straw, he knew that he is shameless, and he really did regret provoking Sam. But he was on path of no return. Sam didn't say anything immediately and just looked at the regiment commander as if he was thinking about it. The regiment commander thought that Sam was afraid and he started egging him. What now Sam? Aren't you all powerful and claim that the army is full of trash, why don't you prove it? If you don't then, get ready to face martial law. Sam took a deep breath and looked at the regiment commander with an expression as if he was hesitating. I have two conditions. What are they? Regiment commander is quite sure that Sam is going to propose some impossible condition, so that he can back off without losing much face. I want ten times the wager, and my bet is ten million spear stones. When the regiment commander heard this, he confirmed his earlier theory of the conditions. After all, the one hundred million spear stones is not a small amount, and it is more than the annual budget of their regiment. 
but he felt that since Sam is trying to back down, he should make it harder for him. He is quite confident that Sam is not going to take the fight. Deal, what is the next condition? Regiment commander agreed. Sam gave a surprised expression, and there is some panic flashed in his eyes, which made regiment commander happier. Sam started looking around as if he is nervous and hesitating, and his movements are rather exaggerated, but the regiment commander didn't feel so. After a brief pause, Sam finally opened his mouth again. The second condition is lifting up the no-killing restriction. When everyone heard these words, they were stunned for a second before thinking if Saw was crazy or pretending to be crazy. Removing no-killing restriction in this case will only make it worse for Sam in this situation. Although, the soldiers felt shameful and humiliated, they are quite confident that Sam wouldn't last a minute against the battalion. So, when they heard that Sam is asking for lifting the restriction on killing, they thought he went nuts and take a couple of them with him in a suicidal attack. Even the regiment commander thought the same way, but after some thought, he found a long-winded reason on why Sam would say that. And that would be Sam trying to use the no-killing policy of the military to escape the predicament. When they said the rules to Sam's badge, they didn't mention anything about killing and death duels. So, might be thinking that they don't have such arrangement, and the military might not want to change the rules for a single fight. Even though, the reason was long-winded, that was the only thing he could relate to the condition. Even the deputy general thought so. Sam's nervous face only made him feel all the more so, and the regiment commander didn't want to let go of this opportunity to put down Sam, he thought that situation is already in his favor, and ready to put down Sam, in case he would try to pull some kind of stunt like this again. I agree. When Sam heard these words, his face was full of shock and nervousness. His expression was as if he didn't know what to do anymore. After some pause, Sam asked, Can I use all my weapons? The regiment commander didn't even think much and just agreed. As far he was concerned, Sam was bound to back off when the time really came to fight. As assemble your team. But there shouldn't be any great realm cultivators. Sam stuttered and his gaze was all over the place. This nervous wreck of him was making it obvious to them that he is just trying to save his face, and they thought that he might be thinking that someone would definitely not let this fight happen, since it is so unfair. After more than 10 minutes the battalion was assembled in a training ground. Sam stood in front of 500 people and looked at the regiment commander nervously. After seeing that the regiment commander was clearly content, he knew that his plan worked. All of a sudden, his nervous expression was gone. He is back to his usual confident self was back. He looked at the regiment commander with a smirk. Regiment commander suddenly became tense, he had a feeling that he walked into a trap, and actually, his guess was right. Sam really did lay a trap. Otherwise, wouldn't you be letting them off too easily? He went against the 300 people alone without using all his weapons. Now, even though he has to go against 500 people, he can use all his gadgets, and he didn't even have to use all of them to deal with these guys. Deputy General also observed the change, and he also felt surprised, but he didn't show it on his face, rather he waved his hand as he commenced the fight. Start. Sam immediately moved. But he didn't dive into the crowd, the soldiers are still a bit surprised that Sam hasn't backed down. They are quite confident of it after all. With their expertise, it is quite difficult to notice the difference in Sam's demeanor in that small period of time. Before they knew it, Sam is on the harbinger, floating more than 20 feet in the air. He smirked at the crowd and took out the golden crescent. When the soldiers saw it, they couldn't help but become tense. They fought aerial enemy, but those enemies are bird-type beasts which are big in size. Their only option at that time are mostly the long-range attacks. Because of the beast's large size, they even have some chance in attacking by jumping up in the air. But Sam is completely different from all those scenarios. He is small, fast, agile, spontaneous. They have to count their lucky stars. Sam didn't make the first move, he just looked at the crowd spontaneously. Today is the day the world will know why he named his board as Harbinger. It is Harbinger of the Destruction and Calamity. The soldiers started throwing the fireballs, water spears, wind blades. All kinds of attacks are being thrown at him. But Sam is moving too fast. After a couple of volleys, Sam finally started attacking. He moved his front foot a bit forward, and the toes touched a small protrusion. A small groove opened in the front part of the board. Then the board tilted a bit towards front, as the groove was pointed in the direction of the soldiers. With a cold smile on his face, Sam made his first attack. A blue flame flashed over the groove with the sound of a small explosion, as a small thin and sharp metallic disc was shot out of the groove. It is practically invisible for most of the crowd, and they only saw it when one of them reminded. Ah. And that reminder is the cry of a soldier. Some of them could vaguely see a small circular disc was pierced into his soldier, and before they could see it clearly. Boom. An explosion took away the whole arm completely from the shoulder. The arm was gone in the form of bloody mist. The soldier didn't even have time to scream as he was completely fainted. If one couldn't observe the small movement of his chest, due to weak breathing, they would consider him dead. 
This is one of Sam's addition to the Harbinger. A small metallic disc which was shot with the propulsion caused by the methane. It is not dangerous. But the small formation that was placed on it is dangerous. That formation is called explosion trap formation. It is used for trapping enemies, and the formation will be activated once anyone enters it. Actually, the formation's rank is not more than rank 2. And it is not that much preferable if one wants to create a lot of damage. Simply put, both the disc and the formation doesn't work on these people individually. But when they put them together, the situation is different. Sam activated the formation and shot the disc. The speed of the disc is enough to penetrate an enemy within 50 feet radius before activation. So, after it entered the skin, the explosion occurs from the inside. The damage is not simply 1 plus 1 equals 2. If Sam targeted the chest area or any other vitals, the person would be dead. While the deputy general and the regiment commander are thinking about this and the uses it could bring to the military, Sam didn't stop. While moving swiftly in the air, Sam didn't stay in the spot for more than one second. He is like the king of the sky moving and avoiding all kinds of attacks thrown at him while he shot the discs, as well as the arrows from the golden crescent. Him having the control of the wind flow with his wind elemental control didn't help the soldiers either. The situation is completely one-sided. Some of the soldiers tried to make attacks by jumping in surprise, but they were shot by the arrows before they could jump for more than 10 feet. Even if some attacks really did make their way towards Sam, the harbinger started glowing slightly, and the attacks are almost nullified. There is not much damage being done to Sam at all. Battle formations. The regiment commander wasn't able to control himself, and immediately gave a command. As soon as they heard the shout from their commander, they came out of their stupor. They were so into their thoughts that Sam wouldn't make a decision of fighting a battalion, and if he did, they thought that they would be able to deal with him with just sheer number. Now, only they understood that they are judging Sam based on their personal standards, that guy is way above their league. He is on a league of his own. The battle only started two minutes ago, and their casualties are already in double digits. They move swiftly to execute their battle formations. Generally, each company of 50 soldiers will have a battle formation of their own based on their elementary attributes. In fact, the companies will be made with numbers of same attributes mostly or multiple compatible attributes which work better when they are together. Only, in the rare cases, they would make a company of soldiers with random and many attributes. Sam could see that there are more than six companies which are created based on their attributes which can utilize their battle formation. As for the rest, their members are down for the count. Sam stopped attacking as he looked at the formations of soldiers with interest. If the soldiers are compatible and their fighting spirit and coordination reaches a limit, the formation will be highly effective, and some phenomenon will occur to represent that state. Otherwise, the formations are just combination attack tactics. He is interested because, he was hoping to see a true formation which could cause that phenomenon. And his hopes came true. Two companies are emitting a wind elemental and earth elemental energy with a high concentration. Sam looked at them as he observed the spiritual energy becoming condensed and taking a form. The wind elemental energy took a form of a hawk, and the earth elemental energy took a form of a brown-colored gorilla. They both are so massive and they are more than 30 feet tall. Sam was intrigued. This is formation of battle spirit. When the battle intent of the soldiers strong enough and they are coordinating in the most efficient manner with a single thought process this battle spirit will be formed. These battle formations are designed by formation masters also. They would select the appropriate positioning of the soldiers to get a desired battle spirit, and the coordination will be depending on the commanders and unity of the soldiers. There are other types of battle spirits, which are not designed previously and rather formed spontaneously, due to the collective effort of the soldiers, and their coordinated fighting style, an even more rare battle spirit is, the individual battle spirit. When an individual battle intent is so high that it can rival an army, they can also condense a battle spirit solely based on their fighting style. But for that to happen on has to meet the right match and give each other enough pressure, and also have an extraordinary will to battle. Sam was curious if he would condense a battle spirit, but he didn't need a match yet. That is why he is looking at the two spirits eagerly. After they are condensed completely, Sam smirked and said in a loud voice. Since, you two teams are interesting enough, let's have some fulfilling battle. I will eliminate the strays first. Sam immediately vanished along with the harbinger in a swift manner. He floated over the soldiers and the remaining formations which didn't even complete the formations or create a battle spirit and the rest of the individual members. One could see a circular opening under the harbinger, and a highly concentrated spiritual energy-filled substances were being dropped over the crowd. Sam was like a flash of light above them as he moved while dropping the small destabilized energy cells. Deputy General is seeing these energy cells for the first time, but he understood the degree of danger they possess, as soon as he observed the spiritual energy turmoil they are causing. Boom 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 boom. Soon many explosions occurred and when the dust settled, all they can see are the damaged bodies spreading all over the battlefields. Within half a minute, Sam destroyed the whole battalion. 
Now, there are only two companies left. They howling in grief and sadness. They are staring at Sam with incredible hatred. They finally understood how powerful Sam is, and he has only been toying with them all this time. They knew that they would die as soon as Sam wished to do so. But they still want to take revenge. If they can't defeat him, they would at least hit him once. The gorilla started roaring as the whole company moved forward. At the same time, the hawk floated over with its wings spread. Sam looked at the two spirits and took out the reaper sword. He wants to try a new technique he thought of recently at the same time testing the battle spirit's ability. When the deputy general and the regiment commander took a look at the blood iron sword, they remembered something. The news about the candidate slaughtering a noble family of 300 members and making swords out of their blood. They thought that the news is some exaggerated rumor. But when they saw the blood iron sword and blood aura it is emanating, they were stunned and immediately understood who that candidate was. So, it is not a rumor. Sam is the one who did that. No wonder. These are the thoughts in their mind. If regiment commander knew that Sam is that person and the news was real, he wouldn't have provoked him and wouldn't have proposed this battle. But it is too late to regret now. Sam flew higher and higher towards the sky, and after reaching more than 40 feet, he dropped himself with head down off the harbinger before storing it away. He held the reaper sword with both hands as he dived towards the hawk spirit approaching him. The kinetic energy increased as he moved downwards, but the sword in his hands didn't even vibrate once from the winds. Rather, he is collecting the wind elemental energy from the surrounding wind currents, as he condensed it into the sword blade. As the force of his falling increase, right before he reached the hawk spirit, he sliced the sword in the air. A huge wind blade was slashed downwards as it tore through the hawk spirit, as well as the gorilla spirit below it. The wind blade swept the ground like a typhoon, as the soldiers who were in the two formations puked blood, and some even fainted directly. Sam didn't crash on the ground. He took out Harbinger before he could crash and move swiftly as he hovered away from the crash. After the dust cleared out, all of them could see a huge vertical crater formed by the wind blade, or rather the wind blade created by the sword slash. The soldiers were scattered. But Sam isn't completely fine. He was a bit exhausted. He took out some spear stones as he absorbed the energy as fast as possible. His absorption rate is quite high, so his complexion returned back a little. Sam looked around and then found a solid stage which is used for individual duels. He walked towards the stage and stood in the middle of it. He took out a fire energy cell. This one is a big one made of several fire elemental spear stones, completely unlike the ones he is putting on for sale. Sam closed his eyes, and the fire elemental energy flew out of the cell and started burning the stage. The spectators only watched the scene as Sam stood in the middle of the golden flames. The flames burned fiercely, and soon they could see that stage is melting in some spots. After a few minutes the flames were stopped, and the spectators can see that the stage is molten in a weird shape. It is actually, Sam's double S signature. Sam walked towards the regiment commander and the deputy general. From today onwards, this is a brand I am marking on your territory. If you remove it before defeating it, I will come every day for a fight. This is a symbol which shows you are marked as trash by me. He then looked at the fallen soldiers. He didn't go completely all out and didn't have intent to cult out the battle. Many soldiers are critically injured, but most of them still survived. Though, it would be hard to say when they would recover. Even the energy cells he exploded are of lowest quality, which would create least damage. Next time, think before you blindly wag your tail like a dog and do someone else's bidding. If the same thing repeats again, the outcome wouldn't be the same. The regiment commander didn't say anything and only held his head down in shame. What Sam said is right after all. He shouldn't have helped General to satisfy his personal grudges and target a novice by abusing his profession. Sam started walking away and he suddenly remembered something and rushed back. He extended his hand and said, Pay up. The 5th Regiment commander immediately became tense. Now only did he remember the bet which he absolutely cannot pay. Sam looked at the Deputy General as if asking him to deal with the situation. After some serious discussion and negotiations, Sam finally left the regiment with a scroll. The scroll was the indication of the debt the 5th Regiment owed Sam. It has Deputy General as the guarantor. The deed is signed with the blood and the spiritual energy signature. If within the time, they didn't pay the debt, Sam could take the deed to the higher authorities. In this case, to the Duke and even the superiors in the Imperial capital. After Sam left, the 5th Regiment commander assembled all the soldiers, who were clearly dejected and lost all the confidence and issued an order. All the news has to be sealed. Don't say a word about what happened due to Sam's visit to any person outside of the regiment. Even if he didn't give the order, the soldiers didn't have guts or face to share the news to other regiments. Next day, the remaining four regiment commanders asked the 5th Regiment commander about what happened the day before. Even though the soldiers didn't leak the news, many people in the base saw that Sam along with the deputy general made his way towards the 5th regiment, but they didn't get any reply and only had their questions shunned. They became more curious by these actions. 
But the thing is they didn't have to wait for long to know what happened, well for at least one of them. Because, someone saw that Sam made his way to the 4th Regiment with the Deputy General in tow. The same actions repeated again that day, and by the time Sam left, he has scroll in his hand, and there is a huge signature of his on an arena stage of the 4th Regiment. This time the three remaining regiment commanders became perplexed. They knew that something is happening, but they didn't know what is happening exactly. The two regiment commanders who kept their mouth shut didn't say a thing. Since, all of them are in this together, let us suffer together. That is the only thought in their minds. Among them Jan is the one who is most curious as well as anxious. The rest of the people only messed with Sam because they don't want to be in bad books of general. But he messed with Sam with the intention of getting in the good books of the general. He wants to become a dog under the general at Sam's expense, but the situation seemed to change. So, the second day, went to the camp of the Thunderwolf squad to meet the general, but his efforts are futile. Many people didn't respect or admire the general because he didn't focus much on the army. The only thing he focused on is his students who formed the Thunderwolf squad. He would always stay with them, even the residences of the Thunderwolf squad outside the camp are within his estate. And the Thunderwolf squad is the special place in the camp. Either for their abilities or due to the general's backing, even the door guards and errand boys are arrogant beyond belief. So, Jan didn't get to meet the general to explain the situation. Meanwhile, Sam's conquest went on. On the fifth day, Sam is standing in the first regiment facing Jan who is fully infuriated. He is the one who pissed off Sam more and even deducted most points. So, the retaliation is also more. In other camps Sam only battled a battalion at most, but here, he made a move on all novices. From early morning to the night, he stayed the first regiment, battling one squad after other. Hundreds of battles. But every battle was finished as soon as it started with an energy cell explosion. The squads were crippled. They don't even have much means to retaliate. And Sam marked each battalion's place with a brand. The whole regiment was dejected. This time he didn't even bother to keep a wager. Because, crippling the whole first regiment was more than enough to vent his frustration. Even after this much turmoil and mess, people from the Thunderwolf squad is oblivious it, and that includes the general too. Sam felt that this general is one of the worst ones he has seen in both lives. This guy didn't even care about the military and didn't even listen to the pleas and news that Yan brought to him. All his disciples are too arrogant to even pass the news. For the first three visits at least, Jan didn't know what is happening, but after his regiment was completely destroyed, he made his way to the Thunderwolf squad the same night. This time though, he didn't request anyone to pass his message. General Spark, come out now. He shouted at the gate from the top of his lungs. His eyes are red with fury. If not for following this general's orders, this wouldn't happen. If he didn't get his regiment ready to dispatch within next three months, he would have to face some serious consequences. Then even this general can't save his ass. As for taking revenge on Sam directly, what a joke. If that is an option, does General even have to resort to these despicable means to oppress Sam? Jan is quite shrewd, and he could see that Sam cannot be touched directly or they would face consequences. So, he came here to rant on the General. When the members in the Thunderwolf squad heard this shout, they were completely surprised. They didn't expect that someone would come at this time and shout out for the General directly. General Spark himself was quite surprised because, he knew who this voice belonged to. So, he came out and walked towards the entrance of the camp. All this while he has a frown on his face as he looked at the regiment commander with a serious expression. If there is no suitable explanation there would be hell to pay. Jan, what do you want? Didn't I tell you to not disturb me when I am in the Thunderwolf squad? You are disturbing out raining. When Jan heard these words, he was even more infuriated. Both the general and deputy general are eccentric people. The general is so self-centered that he doesn't care about anything other than his position, his disciples and their training. And General is also someone who is used to abusing the authority, so he didn't let the Deputy General take charge of the duties regarding the welfare of the army. In the whole army, there is not a single person who has admiration and respect for the General, all they have is fear, which the General felt that it is sufficient for running the army. So, Deputy General didn't bother about things as long as they are within the rules. And Sam knowingly or unknowingly took advantage of these two things, and made such a mess in the base. General Spark. I think it is about you understand that you are not only responsible for the Thunderwolf squad, but also the whole army. The general immediately became angry. Even his disciples are staring the Jan with hostility. Jan, you better mind your words. General Spark, with all due respect. I followed your orders along with the remaining regiment commanders and oppressed Sam, going against all the professional ethics. But because of that, Sam destroyed the novices of every single regiment. Now, not a single novice has a will and courage of a soldier. The novices who are the core of the army are mentally destroyed. Five regiments are literally crippled because of your stupid decision. And when I tried to reach out to you, your stupid disciples didn't even give you my message. 
If you are not capable, please step down that position. Or else you better clean up this mess and take responsibility of the Cirque.Yum stances. Jan was fully angry, and he dared to say these words because of two reasons. One of them is that they are truth, and the second one is that the general cannot kill him now, because he would have to give an explanation to Duke himself. Jan took some measures so that if he was really killed here, people would report to the deputy general and the duke. Jan didn't stay there and left without saying anything else. General Spark frowned as he wanted to make sense of the situation. So, he sent some of his disciples to the regiment commanders to ask what happened, but after an hour they returned with no news. They don't want to say anything and said that we have no right to question them. General's expression immediately grew serious. This is the first time, the general's disciples were rejected. He thought for a moment about what changed, and he himself made move to make sense of the situation. Which made even the bootlicker jam to spout such words. So, he went directly to the deputy general's quarters and asked, What happened to the regiment commanders? Nothing. What do you mean by nothing? If nothing happened then why would Jan come looking for me? Nothing happened to the regiment commanders. Nobody broke the rules and everything went according to the system. General Spark swallowed his anger and asked, Report the daily proceedings for the past week. He ordered like a superior he is. Deputy General stood in attention as he recounted everything. The general was frowning deeper and deeper as he heard, and by the end of it, he is fuming mad. Why didn't you stop him, when he is making so much mess? General Spark, you are the one who said that taking care of the army is your role, and I should take it up on myself and follow the rules. You even said that it is not my place to look after the army when you are still the general. So, I only followed the rules in your words. General didn't know what to say. Because, he is the one who said those words, because Deputy General who used to be a peak stage Grand Realm cultivator, was so compassionate towards the soldiers, and he himself didn't want to look like a bad leader in comparison. So, he suppressed the latter with his authority. Now, the same words bit him the butt. General Spark was just a bit away from blowing his top off. He turned around and was about to leave the room, when he heard the Deputy General saying, General, just a suggestion. If you are about to go and confront Sam, I advise not to. Because, he is planning on visiting the Thunder Wolf squad tomorrow so you can do it there. If you confront him in the camp, the soldiers who might hear the commotion will lose the last shred of respect they have on you. When the general heard this, he clenched his fist so tight that his knuckles cracked, and it can be heard aloud in the silent night. But he still followed the advice. He knew that his position in the camp is hanging on a delicate thread. Even though, all the commanders and soldiers are under his control, it is mainly based on the fear of his high cultivation. And another reason is there is no other person who could substitute him. But then he noticed the current deputy general who is climbing the ranks, so he suppressed him. Until now, no soldier complained about him because, even if he didn't care about them all this, well he didn't cause them any trouble. But now, Anabas is taking his anger out on the whole army, because that guy was oppressed by the general spark. Now they started hating the general and blaming him for this trouble. Not only did they lose their confidence they also took some severe beating, particularly the first regiment. If the general confronted Sam now and then the latter decided to let the matter known to all of them the soldiers would feel disgusted serving under someone like him. After all, what kind of person uses his authority to oppress a person in a competition making it unfair to him just make his grandson happy? So, he decided to wait till the next day, and he even saw an opportunity in this. Many soldiers are unsatisfied with the way the Thunder Wolf squad operated. The resources that squad consumes are astronomically high, and they are under constant care of the general. Since, Sam already destroyed the whole army, if the Thunder Wolf squad manages to beat him, then he can put the Thunder Wolf squad's name out, and solidify their position. While this man is making his plans, Sam is inside his tent writing something on a scroll. After writing something, he called out a shadow mouse and gave the scroll along with another letter that he already wrote earlier, and his scholar artisan badge. They disappeared into the space jade of the mouse and disappeared into the dark. He is making some plans for tomorrow, and it is not about the fight, rather it is about the trouble he prepared for the general to deal with the aftermath. How can he let the general off so easily? The next day even before the dawn, Sam and the deputy general walk into the Thunder Wolf squad's camp. The general is already prepared. He sat near an arena where the team battles would usually take place. The fifty disciples all stood behind him. Some auxiliary members are training and doing odd jobs, as if they didn't care about the arrival of the deputy general. But Sam and the deputy general are only looking at the general, particularly Sam who has a cold smirk on his face. Sam slowly walked onto the arena and shouted loudly. I am here to challenge every novice to a death duel. It doesn't matter if they come in groups or one-on-one. -on -one. I will take the challenge all the same. Today either I die here or destroy the novices of the Thunder Wolf squad, there is no other outcome. If anyone in the Thunder Wolf squad is man enough to fight unlike their teacher who likes to play underhanded can come onto the stage. But beware, after I am done with you, you would wish that the death is a better outcome. 
when the Thunder Wolf squad, the general and deputy general even the auxiliary members of the squad heard these words, they were stunned on the spot. Time seemed to have frozen for a second. They didn't expect that Sam would come out this strong. Judging by the Sam's serious expression, he doesn't seem to be joking. He is serious this time. After a few seconds of pause, everyone came out of their stupor, and particularly the squad members are completely infuriated beyond reason. All they want to do now was to tear Sam into pieces. But their teacher said that he would be the one speaking and didn't let them speak unless he permitted. Sam, do you know what you are doing? You are making a move on your own military. The general said. He also didn't expect Sam would come up with a death duel straight up, and began to hesitate. He also heard the news of the Cougar family massacre, but he knew better than anyone that the news is true. But he also has enough confidence that his disciples could beat Sam, even if they don't make it one-on-one, -on -one, they can still do so in a squad. Even if it sounded unfair, their squad is meant to be a team combat experts, not the individual combat experts, he didn't find it shameful to do so. That is also the reason he didn't let the soldiers challenge Sam, and let them make a move on his teammates instead. Sam just stared at the general with a serious look full of killing intent. He really wanted to kill this guy right here right now, and if he planned a perfect night sketch, he would be able to make the whole body disappear without leaving a trace of the act. But he has other plans for this guy. Sam wants to give this guy a beating, and he also wants to change a bit, so he didn't want to kill for every grievance. But if this general pushes his button once more, Sam would definitely show him hell in the future. Seeing that Sam is not responding, General frowned and understood that there is no backing down, but he has to test the waters first. He called Jim over and whispered something in his ear. Jim's expression changed clearly indicating that he extremely unwilling and unconvinced. But he still went on to the stage and looked at Sam. How dare you to come here and challenge us? Do you think that Thunder Wolf squad is somewhere you can come and go as you please? I will make you regret coming out of your mother's WOMB. Jim is extremely angry at Sam, because his teacher only said that he is going to test the waters and estimate Sam's strength, and he also said that he is not Sam's match which made him feel indignant. So, he started blurting some nonsense as soon as he stepped on the stage. But the reaction was completely what he didn't expect. He could feel that Sam's gaze became icier, and he is also looking at him in a completely different manner. He involuntarily took a step back, and only after a few seconds did he realize what he did and became even angrier in embarrassment. He took a step forward and yelled. I will show you why they call me Thunder Leg Jim. I will teach you a lesson you will never forget. He didn't wait at all and made a move immediately. He felt that Sam's temperament changed a lot within a second right after he made a statement, but he didn't know what it is. Even the general and deputy noticed the changes, but they don't know what changed. Only Sam knew what changed. He is suppressing his blue.st to not to show it outside. If he shows it out, then there is a high chance that they will let Jim quit. Sam is very sensitive about his birth, and he didn't like it whenever someone mentions it. That is why the word bastard is like a trigger to him. Now that Jim mentioned his birth, even without earlier frustration and grievance, he would make a living hell for him. Jim didn't know Sam's thoughts. He moved in a fast manner as blue color lightning crackled around his legs. He stared sending powerful kicks at Sam at a lightning speed. This is the first time, Sam is fighting a lightning type warrior mage. Even though, he fought a few lightning mages before that is all in a group fight, and lightning and thunder elements are very rare. From the looks of it, the best of these elemental mages of the Southern Star are all in this camp now. Sam didn't care though, he also moved like a phantom. He is even faster than Jim as he dodged nimbly. His moves are fluid, his face is cold and expressionless. He didn't even feel a little bit of pressure from the fight. After playing for a while, Sam got bored, his hand glowed in golden light, and he blocked the kick coming towards his face. He looked at Jim who is incredibly frustrated due to lack of a single proper hit and said, You call yourself Thunder Leg Jim with these pathetic techniques. All you can do is move a little faster and kick a little harder, and you dare be arrogant in front of me. I will show you what a leg technique is today. As soon as his words finished, he swung his arm which held Jim's leg, which made the later make a turn with his other leg as a pivot. By the time he regained his balance, Sam is already standing shoulder to shoulder with him facing the same direction, and placed his hand around his left hand around his neck. Before he could realize what is happening, Sam took his neck as support and raised his two legs, and locked Jim's hip in a leg scissor lock, as he threw his weight downwards. Right before he could fall down, Sam placed his hand on the ground and stayed like that without touching the ground. His torso is facing upwards as he placed the second hand downwards on the ground. With his two hands as support his body stayed in the air, while his legs held Jim's hip in a scissor lock. Jim was bent backwards as his feet stayed on ground. He was drenched in sweat and didn't even dare to move around. All the people in the scene are stunned by the move. This is Sam's version of modified Kani Basami. A move which is part of Kinshiwaza the forbidden techniques of the judo. Basically, Kani Basami is a scissor lock around the hip or legs and throwing the opponent. 
This will cause serious lower body injuries to the opponent, and it is banned in the official judo on the earth. Sam's version, though, is even more dangerous. Since he can hold the weight of the two bodies with his single hand, he modified this technique to his use. He could directly break the spine of the opponent as long as he wished and make him a cripple for the life. And if he wished so, he can even decide to paralyze the upper part of the body or lower part or even both. Sam looked at Jim and said, This is called a leg technique. Now tell me, which part you hate most in your body, the upper body of the legs or both? I can help you break it. I'll leave me. Please. Let me go. Don't say that. Aren't you the great thunder leg, Jim? You are supposed to make me regret coming out of mother's WOMB. Why are begging like a bitch now? Sam's eyes were cold and full of malicious intent. He is like a wild beast out for blood. Jim could almost feel as if he was struck in a beast small. Sam, you better let him go. Otherwise, you won't be leaving this place alive. General Spark said in a cold voice. Sam didn't even bother to look at him. From what Sam understood, if even the Marquis can get the news that Sam cannot be touched, then the General would definitely know. As for why these candidates can fight each other. That might have something to do with those people behind the scenes not placing any rules about the infighting between the candidates. After all, they need the best person, and the strongest is always the best in this world. If a candidate can outwit, outsmart and outplay another candidate that only proves that the loser is not capable. This is just Sam's conjecture. So, he is not afraid of the general at all. Sam just looked at Jim whose legs are shivering. I dot I, su dot dot render. I am sorry Jim. I think you got something wrong here. This is a death match, and the life of the loser is not in his hands, the winner decides, and, in this case, I decide whether you get the live or die. Jim shivered in fright, but that only increased the pain on his hip. Sam smiled ruthlessly as he said in a creepy voice. You are feeling helpless, right? You are feeling the pain, right? You are unwilling to end your journey like this, right? But you have to go through this, do you know why? Because you involved in a matter you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have come to my camp and instigated the whole farce with Yan. Now, you are paying the price. When Sam said these words, Jim turned his head and looked at him with his eyes red in fury. Why are you looking at me with that hatred? I am not the one who led you into this. Remember, you told you to come and make trouble for me. Remember why you even bothered to come and make trouble for me who doesn't even know you. Sam's words are like some directions pointed in a lost way. Jim involuntarily looked at General Spark. General Spark felt that something was wrong, but he didn't know what it is. He stood up and shouted. Sam, let him go. But Sam didn't bother to reply. He continued. His words are as poisonous as a viper. Yes, he is the one. Your beloved teacher is responsible for this. Do you even know why he is targeting me? Do you even know how we have this beef when I came to the city for the first time? Because of his grandsons. Due to his grandson's incompetence and jealousy, they complain to him and he is taking it out on me, but on whose expense? You are just a pawn for this play. He doesn't want to lose face, so he sent you to do all the dirty work, but that is not the only reason, do you know why he sent you? He could have just introduced his grandsons to the commanders, and they would have asked them for the favors, but why did he choose you? When Sam asked these questions there is confusion mixed in the pain on his face. General knew that situation is moving out of hand so he was about to make a move, but Deputy General stopped him. Move aside. He barked coldly. General Spark, you said everything will be according to rules, and everything is going on like that. Sam mentioned that this is death duel, and it would be so no matter what. Loser dying or living will be decided by the winner. If you interfere now, I may not be able to stop you, but you also cannot stop me if I make a move on your students. If you break the rules, I will also do so. How dare you threaten me? General Spark, do you think I am afraid of you? I may not be your match now, but you think you can kill me if I am hell-bent on escaping. You seem to forget what I am good at. And by the way, it is also unknown if I go all out, then I won't be able to grab you to hell with me. You stayed in that pathetic middle stage novice for 20 years. And I might reach the same stage in less than 3 years. It is about time you stop putting yourselves on such high pedestal. General's face immediately sank, this is the cold hard truth, and that is also one of the reasons that he suppressed the deputy general before. He doesn't want Ladder to have any accomplishments, lest he would gather enough resources to surpass him. Are you sure you want to go against me like this for a brat? I am pretty sure, as you said before I will do my duty to utmost capability to make sure that everything is going according rules. While the two big shots are having a confrontation, Sam is still speaking with Jim as he tightened his legs bit by bit. Do you still not understand? He knew that I am a ruthless guy. He knew that I slaughtered 300 members alone because they hurt my teammate. So, he found you guys as a target for my anger. Since, you are the guys who started finding trouble to me, I would leave his grandsons alone. You are pathetic scapegoat for his grandsons. When Sam's words reached him, Jim's face was already paled. He didn't know what to think of it. 
but the pain was telling him that all this wouldn't have happened if his teacher didn't send him to do the dirty work that day. He felt betrayed and used. At this moment, Sam's voice came again. So, whatever that is going to happen, you can only blame it on your teacher. After that, the whole place turned silent and only cracking sounds could be heard. Then came the sound of a painful and miserable wailing. Ah. Jim cried on top of his lungs. He could feel his spine cracking, and he slowly lost the feel of his legs. It is as if he didn't even have legs at all. He couldn't it move them, he couldn't even feel the pain of his legs. Sam stood up leaving the now paralyzed Jim on the stage. General Spark stared at him with fury, but he held back because, once he made this move, there would be no stepping back, he has to kill the deputy general, and even make sure that his students are also silent, so that the news will be buried. But that is impossible. Sam looked at him coldly and kicked Jim out of the stage, and then walked back to stand in his original position. General looked at him coldly, he then looked at his students who also heard what Sam said to Jim. They also started doubting the motives of their teacher on sending them to mess with Sam. General now understood that Sam is here for more than just defeating his squad. He is here to destroy him. Sam destroyed his position in the hearts of the soldiers and commanders, now he is destroying his position in the hearts of his students, for whom he even gave up on the army, even risking his position. Now, Sam shook the foundations of their bond between him and his disciples. He looked at the young man standing on the arena who was staring right back at him fiercely. I thought, that Thunderwolf squad will be all that. But this isn't much. How about you guys come in teams, that would save me a lot of time. These words from Sam back everyone out of their shock, and they looked at Jim and Sam with a look of fury. They knew that their teacher is the one pissed the other party off, but they still cannot let that person walk all over them. From what they saw, they knew that they cannot beat Sam individually, and there is only one way that can give them sufficient confidence, and that is ganging up on him. Even if it was unfair, they are a team and they always work as a team. A total of 27 novices walked onto the stage as they started standing in a formation. These are the real novice squad of the Thunderwolf squad. Out of 33 are reserve members, which are also as strong as the rest of the members in the squad. It is just that they are not as compatible in the team. Jim is also one of those reserve members. These 27 members have two goals in walking together onto the stage. One is that they don't want to take any risks with Sam, and the other one is to make sure that they can beat Sam overwhelmingly. Sam didn't carry their way. A young man in late 20s who seemed to be the leader of the group said. You might have grievances with our teacher, and some of our squad members might also take part in it, but this is not good enough reason to cripple a person like that, is it? Who are you to decide whether that is reason enough or not? I am the only one that gets to decide on every matter that involves me. Not even your pathetic general who is undeserved of his title is eligible to do so. Let alone you, who is a student of that pathetic life form. The air almost stopped flowing after Sam's words left his mouth. His words are extremely cruel and disrespectful. But nobody has anything to say to that, even the general has nothing to say. At this moment he is angry, but there is one thing that is making him feel like slapping himself. That is not heeding to his son-in-law's words. He clearly said not to push someone so that we would regret it for the life, and he could see why he said that. Sam is not like any normal person, he doesn't have as much tolerance as other normal people. Two weeks of trouble, that too nothing too overboard. After all, give some beatings to the teammates is not that much of a damage, thrashing a place can be considered as acting of some thugs. In actual fact, nobody hasn't even made some serious damage to him yet, and he is already out for blood. In fact, his actions cannot be simply considered as going out for blood. He is making the general lose everything he had, except for the wealth and cultivation which cannot be simply taken away. Other than that, his position as a general, his position as a teacher and a mentor, are all being taken away one by one. He could only pray in his heart that his students wouldn't fall in this battle. If that happens, he would really fail as a teacher. After all, he was supposed to protect them, but he brought them all this trouble. Sam looked at the group of 27 people who are making a formation. There are eight women in the team and they are in the rear of the formation. He looked at them and found out that the formation is something he was a little familiar with, but he couldn't put a finger on it. The leader, the young man who spoke said as he looked at Sam, let us do it this way. We will attack with the full power with our ultimate move, which could take down even a mid-stage great mage. If you can still defeat us in this exchange you will win. Sam didn't say anything and just nodded in agreement. This will make things easier for him. He took out the harbinger and reached the maximum height he could fly. He is more than 50 feet above the arena. But the novices didn't feel FL.us turd at all. Thunder Wolf Squad. The Thunder Wolf Formation Ultimate Move. Thunder Fang. The leader shouted and all the members in the team started channeling the energy. Sam could see that azure blue-colored electric currents started condensing, and out of them a wolf silhouette was condensed. Sam looked at the intensity of the formation spirit which is clearly many times stronger than the earthen gorilla and hawk he encountered previously. He took out the reaper as well as the executioner. 
the Executioner is absorbing the blood essence of Hydra, and it is evolving. Right now it is already at the peak of rank 3, and just a bit away from the rank 4. The rest of the gadgets are only at rank 2 including the Harbinger, and his black coat when he compares them solely based on their material grades. Sam held the two swords in his two hands, and looked at the still condensing wolf spirit. The sky above is crackling with lightning, but Sam still stood there on the harbinger, as if he was invincible. Attack. The leader of the squad shouted on top of his lungs. The wolf raised his head. It is more than 20 feet tall. But it is still more powerful than the formation spirits he has seen before. Sam started condensing the elemental energies into two blades, one with fire and another with wind. As soon as the wolf leapt with his mouth wide open, Sam also stored away his harbinger as he dived headfirst. The executioner was filled with wind element, while the reaper is filled with fire element. He crossed his hands while still holding the swords. Just before the wolf spirit and he met, Sam opened his hands as he swung the swords. Two sword style, dual wing slash. Two sword rays came out one with golden flames burning and the other with white light. First the fire ray landed on the wolf, followed by the wind blade raging the flame intensity. The wolf spirit which was coming at him in a ferocious manner, clashed with the attack, and immediately dissipated into thin air and the raging fire still moved in the same speed towards the group. The whole arena was covered in fire, and the wails of the squad can be heard. But a loud explosive boom drowned their cries. Boom. The loud explosion was none other than Sam landing on the stage. The stage exploded into ruins, and stone fragments are flying around. No. The great mage level squad members jumped over to help their juniors. But when the dust settled, they stopped in their tracks as they saw a daunting figure who was standing in the center. Sam's upper body was bare and was only covered with some rags of cloth, revealing all the scars on his body. He held both swords in his hands as his back faced the group who fell unconscious but still affected by the fire. He looked at the great mage members who are about to step up coldly. They didn't know why, but they felt afraid of going onto the stage. They felt like Sam is a predator who is lording over his territory, and if they dared to enter the territory they would definitely die. Sam stored his swords away and looked at the surroundings before turning back to the great realm cultivators. You can save them if you want and if you want to take revenge, I suggest you let go of that plans and stay obedient. Because, I have already reached the limits of my tolerance. If you guys provoke me again, I won't have any qualms on reaping the lives of yours like fruits from a tree. He turned around and was about to walk away. But he turned around again and walked towards the general. He whispered in a low voice, so only two of them could hear it. I know that you cannot touch the remaining teammates. If you still wish to oppress them then do so with all your heart, I am pretty sure that the next batch are not that easily pushed around. But there is one thing I am going to warn you about, you better open your ears and listen to me clearly. Don't you dare make a move on Watt. If I find out, something happened to him, even if it is the slightest attack, ambush, oppression whatever it is. If something happened to him, I will come and take your life. At these words, General almost laughed up in mockery, and sensing the Sam just continued his words. You can mock me all you want, but you better ask your son-in-law about it. Sam turned around and made his way out of the camp. General Spark didn't bother with Sam's words and immediately tended to Jim, and the rest of the Great Realm cultivators tended to the injured members. Soon, a rank 4 healer came and took a look at the condition of the people. He was able to heal the wounds of the rest of the novices, but when it came to Jim, he can only shake his head. He is the best healer in the military, and even he cannot do anything. The spine was cracked in a peculiar manner. One section was completely shattered as if it is turned into powder, and there is a vertical crack all over the spine. The nerves are also damaged, but the healer cannot do anything about it. After all, not any healer can grow bone, even if they have ability to regrow a limb, they cannot perfectly grow a spinal bone when the flesh was still intact. In this case, the healer has to do a surgery. Yes, a surgery. In this world a surgery is not too uncommon. After all, not everyone can use Sam's observation ability, and they cannot heal all types of wounds. So, the surgeries are common, but they don't take as much time as the ones in the modern earth. When General heard the diagnosis, he was stunned. He immediately carried Jim and ran towards the pharmaceutical tower. The tower head here is a rank 5 healer and a rank 5 potion master. General Spark is hopeful that he can save them, but the result shocked him. The tower head of the pharmaceutical tower refused to see him and said that he was busy. When General heard this, he immediately became enraged and started releasing his aura and spiritual energy suppressing everyone. General Spark. This is not your military, and it is not your place for you to behave as you like. You better behave. A man who seemed to be in his fifties walked out. He has a scholarly look as he placed his hands behind his back. I am not treating your disciple no matter what, you can get out of this place. If you stay here one more minute, then I will remove the discounts the pharmaceutical tower offers to Southern Star Military. Why are doing this? This is the matter of the future of a youngster. I don't even know how I offended you. 
but I apologize if I did anything wrong. Please help him. General Spark immediately calmed down and begged. He knew the pharmaceutical tower is not a place for him to throw his weight around. The tower had himself as a nascent, and he also have two identities as healer and potion master. He is far more esteemed than his general title. If the discounts and contracts between the pharmaceutical tower and the army are affected by his action, the consequences are something he himself cannot bear. Of course, he didn't offend me, but you had clearly offended someone else you shouldn't have. General Spark, I heard you have already made a mistake in the past why offending someone you shouldn't have, you should have learned your lesson. You are saying that this matter is regarding the future of the youngster, so what about the future of the youngsters you have oppressed? I can only say this. But I cannot help you. Seeing that young man's suffering is making me feel bad, but I cannot do anything, you should have foreseen these consequences. Now, please leave before I decide to take any further actions and never come back. General Spark gritted his teeth in frustration. He didn't know what he has to do for his disciple to get greeted. He is the reason that Jim is in this state, and now the healer is saying that he is the reason that Jim is going to be in this state. What kind of grave mistake did he do to offend someone to this point? At this point of time, he didn't have enough time to ponder about it, his only option is to request Duke. So, he darted out of the tower, by this time the remaining Thunder Wolf squad members already came here. When they looked at General and Jim still looking lifeless in his hands, they understood. Jim looked even more devastating than before, his eyes are filled with despair. He looked at his fellow squad members and then his teacher. He said in a low voice, Teacher, why did you do this to me? When those hopeless and disappointed words were heard, everyone was silent to the point it became eerie. General Spark didn't know what to say. One thing was true, Sam clearly took it out on Jim because he did this. But he didn't who was troubling him from getting the required treatment. At this moment, a silver light flashed as Wa came on his silver wind. He looked at the general coldly and took out a letter from the storage before throwing away and left. One of the squad members picked the letter and opened it to see the contents, once he looked at them he was stunned before reading them out loud. General Spark, even though you are at the top of the game of oppressing others with your authority, I want to know your opinion. How does it feel like being oppressed by others? Did I do it right? Oh, by the way, I am a rank 5 artisan, and I do hope you are intelligent enough to guess that significance. Sam. After hearing the contents of the letter, General Spark became hopeless. The person who made Jim like this and the person who is stopping Jim to recover is same, and that person is a novice brat whose age is smaller than him being a nascent. Suddenly, he remembered the previous setback he suffered, which led his three daughters to suffer along with him for offending someone. But the difference is, at that time, he offended a person who has same strength as him, but he has high-level background. This time though, the person is weaker than him, and the strength difference cannot be simply described as a lot. He only has one way now and that is to mediate the conflict. Even though, the four towers of profession are operated separately, they are still a lot closer to each other than the ruling party of the territory. According to him, Sam must have used his potential as a bargain, since he is only 16, and he is already a rank 5 artisan to prevent Jim from receiving the treatment. His guess was almost right, but the deal is not the future potential rather a recipe. Sam has so many recipes of potions and pills in the divine dimension, and they are a lot more advanced than the ones that are in the market. Sam picked one of the lowest level recipes available in the Dimension Library, which is used for people below Grand Realm, to restore spiritual energy immediately, and made a deal through Watt with the Tower Head. Even if he is a rank 5 potion master and upgraded version of the potion, if it can be in his hands, and he offered it to the superiors, that would be his contribution which provides him more opportunities for his future development. But General didn't know this, if he did, he would have been surprised on how determined Sam is to oppress him by trading something so valuable. General Spark thought for a moment and decided to visit the Duke, but before that he has to do something, and that is to talk with his son-in-law. So, he led his students to the Duke's estate, and he entered the communication room used for communicating with the Marquises. His students are waiting in room as one of them laid Jim on a table whose expression is devoid of life and light. At this moment Sam is talking to the 4th Regiment commander who is the instructor of the camp. I want to go out. His voice is devoid of any respect, but the commander didn't mind and just asked nervously. Why? I have something to do in Artisan Tower. I am not going to interfere in the business mission of my teammates. Sam took out his tailor artisan and weapon artisan badges as he spoke. The instructor permitted him to leave, and Sam immediately went to the Artisan Tower, and that is to upgrade his status. If his guess is right, the Duke will be summoning him by evening, and he should increase his own value to have more weight of his words in the discussion. So, he is here to work for it. By the time, Sam is at the entrance of the Artisan Tower, Watt is already waiting there with his Scholar Artisan badge. Sam went in and after a few hours he came out with a new upgraded badge, and that is his Weapon Artisan badge. Now, he is a Rank 5 Scholar Artisan, Pseudo Rank 3 Tailor Artisan, Pseudo Rank 3 Weapon Artisan. 
After that he didn't stop there, he and Watt made their way towards the Formation Tower, and after that Inscription Tower. Now he is a Rank 2 Formation Master and a Pseudo Rank 3 Inscription Master. How did he get the Pseudo Rank 3 Inscription Master? That has something to do with etching and creation of inscription matrices using Rank 2 inscriptions, which has same effect as a Rank 3 inscription. Now, he is done with his preparations. The problem is mostly resolved. You guys can open the restaurant back. But ask Philip and Cully to work on the impact crystals as much as possible. But don't overexert yourselves if you don't make it with the restaurant. The remaining businesses are already booming, and it will hard to pierce the market. So, try your best but be safe and don't fall into other team's tricks. Sam gave these instructions to Watt and flew away towards the camp on his hoverboard, while Watt himself returned to the estate to give the news to the rest. Sam waited in the tent not even bothering to attend the daily routine, even the instructors didn't ask him to come. They're happy as long as they don't have any interaction with Sam. After all, they picked on him for no reason, and Sam could so too. If he found fault for everything they do and visited their camps time and again, they will lose the rest of the army too. There were any signs of soldiers wanting to quit. Sam is waiting for the Duke to call him. He was so sure because, from what he understood about the general he knew that he deeply cared for his students. And if his hypothesis was right, he would try his best to save Jim from his current state. But since, the tower head of the pharmaceutical tower didn't want to help, there is only one person who can convince him, and that is the Duke. But it was almost evening, and he still didn't receive any call from the Duke. This is because, the general went to have a talk with his son-in-law and was lost in thought. He just kept recalling the things his son-in-law said, particularly the last part of the conversation. General Spark, I already advised you to not to provoke him, but you still did. I withheld some info before, in case I would piss off that guy if I told it to someone, but since you are not a person who is not willing to listen, then I cannot do anything but tell you about this. The Blackwater, Sam is the one who destroyed it in my territory. He destroyed the Blackwater branch in Blue Flame City, and the most important part of it is, the leader of the branch is a nascent. But still, there are nothing but the bones left of that person. Sam killed him right before my eyes. That is one of the cruelest murders I have seen. That guy has to experience the blood leaving his body, his life force being sucked away, his internal organs being eaten, and his flesh consumed by some really powerful insect-type beasts. Other than a bunch of bones, there is nothing left of him. If you were thinking that any of the news you heard about Sam is exaggerated, then you better think again. If I were you though, I would resolve the conflict as soon as I can. Otherwise, you better kill him in a single blow, and get rid of the trouble once and for all. If you don't though, you are going to suffer. From, what I understood, the most fearful thing about Sam is not his battle prowess or potential, rather it is his brain, his intelligence and his wit. Even if a breath of life is left in him, he will definitely take his enemy's life away before he dies. Goodbye. General Spark fell silent and thought for a while. He understood that Sam is not a typical genius who is just arrogant because of their backing, battle prowess or some minor achievements which they think are big deal. He is different and at the same time dangerous. He is like a wild beast with a strong sense of territorial awareness. But instead of territory, he is so possessive of his things, friends, employees everything that is related to him. 15 days of oppression. A typical genius will either endure or leave the place in pride, seeing that the opposite party is too strong to handle. But Sam went on his way to destroy the things that put the general in his position. He is an insane guy. Only after a long time did the general come to himself and walk out of the room. He met his students and carried Jim as he ran towards the Duke Palace. He has to clear the conflict as fast as possible. Otherwise, he would be in for a treat which he couldn't enjoy. When the Duke saw that the general is running towards him like this, he thought that there is some kind of crisis in the army. Well, technically there is a crisis in the army, but it is not one that he thought of. General met the Duke in the Duke Palace Court along with his students, and informed him of the situation briefly. He is too embarrassed to spell everything has happened because of his ego. So, he vaguely gave the hints, but Duke felt that something is amiss still he agreed to talk to Sam, and sent an attendant to summon him. By this time, Sam is already sitting in the tent in his usual black coat instead of the army uniform. He knew that he has to go meet the Duke, so he would meet him in his own style, after all he is not just any soldier, he has a lot more identities than that. When the attendant came to Sam, he complied and followed the attendant. They rode an eagle-type level 4 beast as they went to the Duke Palace. 